everybody. This is Kevin Marcus Miller. Welcome to Agency Talk. I have a legend in the room. Okay, a lot of you, actually, some of you in the group were requesting this, so this is going to be good. Laura Tickner's in the house. What's up? She's in the house. Yes. She's yes. also in the USA. I'm feeling good, feeling pumped. Whenever I come to this country, I'm feeling like people here understand me. And so yes. I'm excited to be serving your people here today. New agency owners definitely uh, had that. Oh, man, you know, the first time when you ever get that email through and it's like, yes, yes a proposal. And I'm like, oh, shit. What do I do now? <laughs> Panda doc, Panda doc. <laughs> oh man yeah well hey i mean if i knew back then what i know now then i would have made my results a lot more uh smooth let's yes. just put it that way so i'm grateful to be here today thank you for having me and your energy is fantastic so i thank know you. That people in this group must also be pretty cool too because you know your vibe attracts your tribe right so yes to facts. Get it. facts curveball question for you right out the gate let's do it pancakes or french toast Oh, for me, that's easy. Pancakes. I had some pancakes right. last night. Yeah. I'm just gonna... <laughs> nah, I had some, but I, I like those thin crepes. Really? The thin crepes with the okay. Nutella and the strawberries mm. and like some toasted walnuts. Oh my gosh. Okay. And okay. last night I was in the buffet in the Wynn in Vegas and, uh, I was there for like four hours. I got there at like six <laughs> and, just <laughs> ate and, and just kept eating. And I even had this gooey cookie really? and I put it inside of the crepe and I rolled it up and ate it <laughs> like a burrito. <laughs> That's I wild. That's so wild. I was... <laughs> Somebody must have stopped you. <laughs> well, actually, like they were spurring me on. So there we go. That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. So you're visiting the States, but you're originally from UK. Is that right? From UK, based okay. out of Dubai, visiting the US, connecting yep. with people. Um, yeah, it's a good time. People here are so, awesome. Awesome. And so for you, um, what is the main difference between the UK and the United States? Honestly, like I've never been in the UK, so I really don't know. Is mm. there something that that you can pinpoint? I mean, I haven't lived in the UK for a long time, but I always thought that I wanted to come and live in the US because I find that the mindset here is very entrepreneurial and people yeah. spur each other on. Whereas UK, it's beautiful and the history is just phenomenal. And it's someone that's really, I still love to visit. Like I love going to London, mm -hmm. but to actually live there, it's not very inspiring. It's not very motivating. Whereas here, I always feel like I always meet people who are just incredible and they're supportive. So oh. I would say it's a mindset thing. In the UK, it's like, there's this kind of cap on what's possible oh. whereas in the u.s it's like anything's possible and same in dubai similar u.s and dubai the culture are very different but it's like mm. very entrepreneurial whereas uk they just don't really have that it's more like you go down the corporate route and that's kind of going to be your life right and wow. yeah i just don't feel understood in the uk i feel like an outlier that's actually kind of deep because that's how i felt i was a songwriter for a long time and i felt like i wanted to be much like I felt like there was a ceiling because all of the yeah. big songwriters in the United States, they hit a ceiling and hmm. then they have to pivot to real estate or to marketing or whatever. But is that how you felt? What were you going to school for in the UK? I dropped out of the UK's number one business degree because my professors had never had their own businesses. And Woo! So I went talk to, to them. them. Talk to them. Yeah, I did. That's real. I did go and talk to them. I went to the front of one of my mm. accounting lectures because I was sat there and he was talking all about like taxes and you need to pay tax. And I was like, shit, I have a business mm. and I never even registered the business because I was <laughs> selling, I was selling online fitness coaching. So I went to the mm. accountant at the front of the room and I said to him, Hey, I have some customers from the United States, from Asia, from Europe. Mm -hmm. What do I do? And he turns to me and he's like, that's something for Google. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, you're my professor who I look up to right. and you're so blunt and you're not even able to offer me help. And it turns out that this person had never been a practicing accountant. So he only- Oh really my theory. goodness. He, yeah, he only knew the theory, right? And so I had clients all around the world, whereas they were only teaching how to do bookkeeping within the UK. So at that point, I kind of just questioned the entire system. And I then did a little more research to find out that none of my professors had ever had their own businesses. And that was really, really weird because like, I don't know, I was like selling fitness programs on the internet back then. And I couldn't quite understand how I should learn from someone who just doesn't have 
<laughs> the practice in the trenches. So <laughs> I started like just going basically to social media to like message people on Instagram questions. And that's how I got my first ever employee because I was trying to ask some questions about affiliate marketing to someone. Mm. And he actually ended up coming and working for me full time, um, which was incredible. So yeah, thankfully resourcefulness right. always gets you to the outcome that you need because the people who are traditional experts these days are not those who are in the trenches experts. And I want to learn from those mm. the trenches. That's what I'm saying. You got to coin that in the trenches experts. I love that. Oh. There we go. Yeah. There in the trenches is. experts. That's what, that's where we're at. So yeah. Um, that's kind of how I've been able to get to where I've gotten to. Um, it's taken a lot of effort <laughs> to be honest, to be able to find the people who are legit experts, right. but you know, when you do the background checks and all the research properly, you find out who's legit and who's not after, mm -hmm. you know, couple days of researching what's your favorite when you do your background checks because i hire vendors all the time what's your favorite little sneak thing to look for that most people don't so a couple of years ago i hired a company to do some outsourcing sales and i say that with a sigh because i'm so ashamed <laughs> that i ever even tried to do this <laughs> because now i believe that this is the most important function to keep in-house but anyway I have to agree with that one but yep after getting my leads stolen after having to go yeah I ended up fixing it all in the end because obviously data breach I had to you know I had to do some mad like wow. oh it was crazy lawyers everything all this that wow. different jurisdictions around the world disaster um after having that experience thankfully my boyfriend is very um intelligent and thorough which is I'm a, more of an entrepreneur like just go for it just like <laughs> let's freaking go so he just said to me like well what if we were to just do like proper background checks on people so it's like yeah. okay how can we do background checks and then how can we also speak to referrals right so it's kind of like how you know when you go and get a job they do background checks on you it's like the same thing right why would you not do background checks on the people that you're going to be bringing into your business to handle your data so that's the first thing the second thing is a really simple way that I found that I, here's how I avoid getting scammed. Yes. Do is I, I will, <laughs> I, I go to the people that I'm wanting to hire. I then have someone on my team that's unknown also right. go through their funnel, right? From a different angle, as in like a potential client, but like from a different angle. Because normally I get treated very differently than how someone mm -hmm. on my team would. So I want to treat how they, I want to see how they'll treat somebody on my team that's unknown, that doesn't have social media following and all this clout or whatever. Yep. So if I like how they treat them, cool, because they're going to be working with them and not me. Okay. Yeah. Um, people always get an owner boner. They're like, oh, <laughs> I just want to speak to Lauren. Right. I'm like, you guys, it's not all, it, it, I hate this so much. So anyway, that's one thing. But the second thing is I want to speak to their referrals. So then I'll have someone from my team go and speak to other clients of theirs. Again, I don't want to do the speaking to the other clients of this person. Correct. Because, <laughs> because like they're going to say different things to me because they just want to talk to me. Right. You would have the same thing, too, because you have an asset that people want. You have your group. Right. You right. have all these like potential clients for them. So I always try and do it like that because then I can make sure that I get like honest feedback. And so this is also something that I advise our potential clients to do as well at my nice. company. Right. Yeah. Let's go and speak to some of my clients. Right. It's an open right. book. I have no no issues. In I doing noticed that a lot in our industry where people they'll be like. We don't do that because then they're going to be like sales agents. Just pick three clients that are cool with it. Yeah, 100%. That's it doesn't it. have to be every single client, but just pick three who are like, yeah, I'm going to do that for you. It's yeah, all good. yeah. This is something like in the past, I, I must say in the past I did that. I had like, I think there was about five or six people mm. that we could always send to. But then what ends up happening is like those people get so many people always coming That's to them. That's correct. So now what we do is we just literally like just go and message any of them who replies, mm. replies. Um. Because it's, I mean, it also depends who you're serving, right? Like, correct. Some some people, if it's yeah, like if it's high ticket, low ticket, yeah. Especially if it's low ticket, you want to just filter them out because that means they're not serious. If they're gonna yeah, ask yeah. so many questions about a sixty dollar program, oh, dude, oh I'm, my goodness, like you are not you. Woo, you have bigger problems. Oh man, I used to sell these fitness programs, and I sold them for about fifty dollars per program. Mm. Some of the questions that I would get asked, it's yeah. like written on the first page, wow. right? 
and it's like they paid fifty dollars, and then they're like, "Oh man, I, I I don't even know." Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I, I I digress. But you know, low tickets great for like liquidating ad spend, right? And also, exactly, exactly. And also and for extension model. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, but I always like to have the high ticket back end built out first, exactly. and then like we have our specialist setter system, you mm-hmm. know, which is where we make sure that we have like quality setters that are also trained on right. downselling, and also then how to, you know basically disqualify as quickly as possible so that we only spend time speaking at the quality prospects. That's been really powerful for us for sure. hundred percent. So one of the things I've been actually talking to my team about is leveling up your association. Yeah. And um, one of my mentors, he makes about 400 million a year. Mm. I was really upset with him because I was just trying to explain to him, like just being honest, Lauren, I was like, obviously I probably... Well, truthfully, I've been through more than just about every other entrepreneur, unfortunately, because I've survived 12 cardiac arrests. And that's like, un, it's like a Guinness world record, basically, and it's scary. Wow. So, so sometimes I don't want to accept that because I have such a non-victim attitude that I don't want to accept that I'm further back than I want to be. Because hmm. I'm sitting there like, no, go mode. I can do this. I can do this. I can hit eight figures. I can do, you know. And he just sat me down. And he's like, listen, Kevin, you've done everything right. Like, really, just think about it for a second. You refuse to fail. You were in your gra- last year, Lauren, I was at my grandma's 90th birthday. And this was actually one year exactly today. I was at my grandma grandma's 90th birthday. And I fell on the floor. And I had nine cardiac arrests back to back in front of my entire family. Oh, my gosh. And so many things changed. Wow. So many things changed. And I, I wouldn't accept it because I, yeah. I'm my whole life. I just, you know, like, I don't want to be limited. Good and shit. he sat me down beautifully. And he just said, listen, Kevin, you've given it 110%. There's no question about that. But there's yeah. one thing you're missing. And I'm just going to be blunt with you. He goes, you don't yet have the right association. You're getting there. But the the level of resilience and how powerful your story is you should be on stages with the biggest of the biggest because of how powerful that story is. Wow. And I was like, dang, that's what I'm missing. It's not the funnel. It's not that I need to keep building more offers. It's literally that. So you've mastered that like beautifully. Like you're sitting there interviewing Grant Cardone, doing these big things, Gary V. What was that transformation for you to get and level up your association? Yeah, well, first I just want to say like, that's insane and I even have some questions about your story because I'm like holy shit that's yeah insane and like your energy is incredible so I'm like gosh I would love to know like how you kind of bounce back from that um a lot of therapy yeah a lot of therapy like weekly therapy right so what happens to your basically what happens to your brain after something like that is you if you are lucky enough to bounce back yeah. Then you're going to want to drift from your routine. And mm. so my routine is okay, every morning, aromatherapy, get in the shower, right? Then you're going to do a check in and make sure where your mindset's at, how how yeah. well do you feel about your self esteem today? Um, if you're feeling low, did you talk to your people today, right? And your mm. ego is going to go, I don't need that. I'm a millionaire. I don't need that. I got this. I can yeah. do this. But that's that's just my ego talking. Right? I'm yeah. I'm broken. I mean, nobody should nobody should be alive after that many times. And I'm one of the only people ever in history to survive that many. So wow. this is unprecedented. Like this is not something, there's no playbook for this. Doctors don't know how to handle this. So yeah. um and so operating at our level that you and I are at, like with entrepreneurship and helping hundreds of thousands of people. So yeah, I think it's just a lot of vulnerabilities required to to maintain, you know? But as well, like, I think, so I actually, something maybe like a lot of people don't know about me. I have Mm. a lot of health anxiety because my brother is disabled. Yeah. So I've Mm. always had, like, I, if I feel like I used to have really, really bad panic attacks. And so whenever I would feel my heart have a palpitation, it would also trigger for me a, a panic attack I would think I was gonna have a heart attack anything like this which is probably why I'm like even like wow this story is insane because Mm. something my friend said to me she also has really but she's like 
she deals with high net worth. She has a massive community of high net worths and she has also really bad health anxiety, but like really, really bad. And she always sees me like training so hard. Like right. I mean, I, I my background was fitness, as I said, and like I pushed my body so much. And she said to me, it's like, it's incredible how much you trust your body. Mm. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I do not trust my body at all. She's like, yeah, the way you push your body. Like you, I've never seen anyone that pushes their body like this. Like even my friends that are like professional athletes, I've never seen anyone. I was like, wow. And it just reframed the way that I saw like how much my body is capable of. And it's like the same for you, right? Like your body is capable of so much. Like the fact that you've been able to go through that and make it out. And like now you're performing on such a high level still and your energy is so incredible. Like the amount your body's been through that, it just shows like that's the capacity of what it can handle, right? And I think sometimes we doubt our bodies and we doubt our ability, even of our minds and our perseverance to actually be able to make it through. But you now even have the evidence to show what the human body is capable of right and so I just wanted to share that because I think like sometimes we can take things as in like oh this happened to me so like I'm weak right. or it's like no, this happened to me which shows how strong I am right because you made it through you're still hit and so when we change our perspective we change the way which we show up to life mm-hmm. and I really wish more people would be able to see like the, the upside and honestly I didn't I was not looking at things like that until my friend said that to me and it was such a profound shift um, that now every time I'm having goosebumps as I say this, I know I'm I'm sitting here. I'm like, yeah, every, every time I have these like doubts. um, Yeah. Yeah. I just remember like what she said to me that one time and I was like, it's so true. Like our body is capable of so much. Like we are, we are the epitome of all the adaptation that has occurred, Right. you know, for the entirety of the human history right we are we have made it to this level so like our bodies can do so much um and so yeah i mean maybe that re 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 reframe is helpful maybe not but um that's incredible and i just want to say like that's really inspired me like your story as well because um yeah i think like it's it's easy to uh at least for me to have these kind of like doubts about like, oh, is my body, is my body okay? Like I I worry about everything. Like people don't know this again. I worry about everything. This is probably like the biggest energetic drain for me. Mm-hmm. Um, It would be like, if my body's feeling weird, I then get really paranoid. Right. right? So yeah. So anyway, that's an aside. But um, I mean, I, Lo, you know, what's funny about this whole conversation. I was like, I feel like her and I are going to get along, like actually know each other on a much deeper yeah, level. Outside I agree. Of business. Cause yeah, yeah, business yeah. is actually not, Like people don't understand it. It's just sports. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's all it is. Like people are idolizing it, but it's just sports. And a lot of us played (laughs) high school sports, college sports. It's not that hard. Yeah. What is hard is being able to inspire other people to play sports at a high level. True. And that's really what we're doing. It's not, it's not about like, Oh, we did this and we made this million. And we did. Yeah. 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 That other people want to continue because they saw us not quit. That's true. Yeah. It's the end of game. I think, I mean, all these, all the high achievers that I meet, it's always the inner game. I mean, the thing that differentiates one person from another isn't the strategy, right? It's like the ability to execute the strategy. And that comes from the way that we see ourselves. And so it's funny because you were talking about, you were talking about the conversation with your mentor. So you, you asked me the question, like, Mm -hmm. how do I connect with these people? And it's funny, like, I was just working on this. I'll just share I don't know if I can share my screen. Yeah. Yep, like I was just working. It. Yeah. This is like a, <laughs> this photo, like everyone's <laughs> always commenting on this pic. It's uh, a great photo because you're, yeah, it's smart. Yeah. It's leverage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And like, I was with, uh, I don't know if you know, Dennis, you, uh, but he, uh, okay. He's like, uh, he made the analytics at Yahoo. Um, oh, cool. And so he has this like strategy to basically take credibility pieces and then spend mm-hmm. a dollar a day on ads. Um, and it just allows you to run the ad to the people that would see that piece of content who mm-hmm. then um, then start associating you with, you know, the, the credibility of that other person. So I just, yeah, I, I never thought about it like that until then. And so awesome. uh, we, were, we, we were at the buffet last night. Yeah, we were nerding out. <laughs> that's who was, was, like, was at the buffet. Yes, he was spurring me on. But- to your point so um the really interesting thing is that like I always felt like I couldn't connect with the people that like I went to high school with or that I grew up around right I always just felt like for some reason 
out of place, even though I had a lot of friends and everything. And then you asked me like this question, like, how do I connect with these people? Yep. If I'm perfectly honest, like, I believe the reason that I'm able to connect with these people is because I have something that they want, Correct. which is attention, right? Correct. And I have spent years and years and years also building up my credibility. So it's not something that just happens overnight. Mm. When I met Grant Cardone and when I interviewed him, I had a really big podcast audience. Mm. Okay. So he was in the UK. I was in the UK. His team reached out to me for him to come onto my show. Now, my podcast then ended up getting hacked. Wow. All the episodes got deleted. Yeah. And so what ended up happening was we actually lost that audience because we then had to re-upload onto like a different channel and they Mm -hmm. couldn't like reconnect the streaming. I don't really understand the technicalities behind it. Mm -hmm. But so then we lost that audience. Okay. Wow. But what I was able to do is I was able to leverage and let other guests know, hey, I had Grant Cardone on. So would you like be interested in coming on this podcast? But I never really doubled down on that as much as I should have, honestly, I for see. the podcast, because I was quite, um, I'll, I'll admit, it was the inner game. I was a little scarred from the hacking of the podcast that I didn't really want to go back to doing it. And then Clubhouse came about because people had known that I'd like interviewed Grant Cardone in the past right. when I went into Clubhouse for example he would know who I was right so we would like right. start talking or whatever but then not because of that actually I was just on Clubhouse genuinely just sharing value and so I grew a big audience there um and so then that since then has resulted in connections which resulted in speaking on the same stage as Gary V um mm. and various different other things speaking at like war room mastermind with Roland Fraser nice. uh, I've heard of war and, mm-hmm. yeah yeah and like so other different things so just to come full circle mm-hmm. I honestly think that like for many many people there's like this one pivotal thing that can change everything if mm-hmm. you perform if you take the opportunity once you have sharpened the axe because Mm. if you go ahead and speak on a stage before you're ready and everyone in that room sees you and you do really really badly word of mouth spreads spreads very quickly okay so if you go on the stage and you perform so when I spoke at Roland Frazier's event went on stage I spoke about um we have this specific method called a CEO scale system which is essentially how to productize a service right so i'm sure you will have heard people talk about productized service before sam Evans has spoke about that like so many people have spoke about that but we have a very specific way of doing it so i spoke about that and then alex hormuzi was in the room before nice. everyone really knew him right and i knew him from way back when because we were both from fitness mm. and so we got chatting and so like i shared with him like that strategy of exactly how he could implement it and then he shared with me some stuff about how to implement a sales team so we kind of had this connection okay then obviously he blew up right and we've stayed in touch and so you know and so it's like you never know as well who's gonna blow up you know what I mean on the social media side of things um and so it's just through like genuinely giving value right we gave Mm -hmm. value to each other and so in my mind I was always like sharing his content when he started posting as well. I was just sharing it to my big audience already that I already had. So it just kind of always comes in circles. And I just think like when you spend time building enough value that you can actually share with people, mm. then they're always going to remember you like just giving without expecting anything back. Yeah. Um, and that has been really helpful for me. And then when it came to, um, I just, I really, I really, 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 really spent a long time on just like giving, you know, just giving and helping and like not asking for anything back. Um, And so I was willing to do that because I knew that it would always come full circle. And then the other thing is I'm just pretty like, I'm just pretty savage with it. (laughs) (laughs) you know you know how i know that we're the same in that way so i i hit up a lead today on linkedin and they said they were interested and they ghosted me for two weeks yeah i sent him a voicemail and he got mad ah yeah i was like that's exactly who i am like you're not gonna play me like my time is important you're not gonna play me i'm not a bdr right exactly yeah like right so one of the best sales techniques that i have is that if I send a message to someone and then they don't reply within 24 hours, mm-hmm. I'll send a message to them saying, dang, did I just get ghosted? And this <laughs> has resulted in the most millions in my business that right. I could put like this one line. Dang, did I get ghosted? This is so powerful. And all my sales reps use it too. But to your right. point, like, 
when it comes to connecting with people, when it comes to leveling up your circle, it comes down to how you see yourself. Because right. if you do not see yourself as someone who has the ability to associate with high level entrepreneurs, high level sports, athletes, whatever you want, then you're not going to be actually like, you just won't go out. You're just like, going to get in there and you're going to be, and you're not, yeah. you're going to let people step all over you as well. You'll be nervous. You'll be shy. You won't even go to the event because you'll wonder, oh, well, I don't think I'm cool enough to be in this room. When instead yeah. you see yourself and you know with certainty that you have the value, you have the skill sets mm. and you have the character traits to actually go in and build connections and to deliver right. value. That is when you get in that room and you have that attractive character where you walk into the room and people are just magnetically attracted to you because right. they can see that you have something about you, right? So mm. I think that, I really think that like, uh, you know that saying like, it takes one to know one, yes. right? When I yes. see someone in the room who's like holding themselves, they're, they're dressed nicely or like they're just dressed in the way that you can tell that they are dressed as themselves. Mm. They are being the best version of themselves that they could possibly be, right? That's the type of person that you want to go and talk to. So if you're trying to be someone else, right? If you're trying to like, you know, copy somebody and do the same thing as them just because like you've seen them do it and you think they're successful, right? That's not you showing up as your authentic self and other people can get this like weird vibe off of you. I don't know what it is. Like, it's something something to do with energetics. But I'm telling you, like, when you know with certainty in your own mind that you have value to offer, you go into that room, you show up, you deliver value, or you just have conversations and you're just honest and authentic, right? right. And uh, so to, 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 to finish my point, um, I would just go to events. Like, when nice. I say I was a savage, I would show up at events. I would fly around the world. I would mm. invest in like being in masterminds, uh, in being at the physical event um, so that I could build connections, right? I'm not afraid to do that. And it always right. pays off, always. Um, so when people are afraid to do that, I just think that they don't yet see themselves, that, that they have the value inside right. of themselves. Because if you know you have the value inside of yourself, you're willing to invest because you know it's going to come back around. Mm. Preach. Wow. I just need to let that sit for a minute because what's going to happen is people, when they see this, they're going to be like, okay, I, I need a notepad. <laughs> let me get my notepad. Cause they're like, you just literally walk someone through personal branding. Mastery is what you just mm. did. And people That's are not going to, they're going to have to replay this to understand the gems. Like mm. even just that little gem about using humor to overcome objections, to ensure people see you the way they're supposed to see you. Yeah, and that might not be your totally. brand, right? Because like that's that's me being my authentic self. Correct. And I want that to ripple throughout my company, right? So that's why I would train my sales reps on that. Yeah. But if you're someone who's like super serious, right? Right, you might it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would send something else, right? So another thing that I used to do when I was actually having a lead generation agency mm. um, and influencer marketing, right? Uh, I would actually send like, here's another idea about what we could do if we were to add influencers to X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And so I would add more value with another potential idea. And then that's how I would get them to reply. Okay. Cause that was more in alignment with that type of brand. Right. It was more in like luxury health and fitness. Okay. Whereas now our clients are all founders, right? right. They all have like a service kind of, you know, they want to be doing con consulting, high ticket stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so for them, they're always getting these emails like quick question, da, 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 you know, <laughs> the classic email that you always like spam, spam, yeah. get out of my inbox. Like if I get another email that says quick question, I am literally going to stop checking my email. Can I book you 30 appointments per day? Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All your money back and I'll pay you 2.5 K. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Okay, oh. sure. Like, there it is. Like, yeah, I'm oh. going to get a free 2.5 grand. I'm like, you guys, it's like, I don't want your 30 crappy appointments. Like, you guys just need to improve your service. And yeah. you go, oh, man. Anyway, uh, so, so funny. yeah, so to my point, um, when it comes to, uh, yeah, like the personal branding side of things, I think I really, I really do think that's it because uh, oh. <laughs> It also goes into the cold email, doesn't it? Because if you're copying yeah. what everyone else is doing, yeah, just add some of your own personality. Love it. Love it. Well, hey, as we wrap up, first of all, for those of you who don't know, Impact School, okay, I've actually had lots of friends tell me that this is 
because I always do my homework, right? Instead of having my guests promote their own shit, right? My job is to, if I see someone that's doing something good, salute them. So Impact School, my stamps on it. I'll put the links in the comments for those of you who want to tap in, okay? Is there anything in particular, Lauren, that you want people to know? So then we're repelling people who should not be clicking on this link. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Like, so, uh, <laughs> man, where do I even begin? <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, you know, um, our real focus is on people who are scaling, right? So anyone who's already kind of past that like beginning, earlier phase, um, we really work with people who over the last couple of years have made a minimum, like minimum of 150, 200 grand, uh, not in revenue cash collected <laughs> in that business. <laughs> so that might go over some of your heads, but that's okay. Just Google that. Just Google that. <laughs> I don't know if it even comes up on Google, I swear. Like, Probably uh, does it. Uh, yeah, I feel like I need to make some content on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, so if, you know, that's really what we look for and people who are, like, you know, willing to be open, uh, willing to, uh, because one of the things that we see a lot, honestly, I think it's just maybe how the industry is at the moment, mm. is people coming in and, like, having this very fixed concept on what needs to be done. Right. right. When oftentimes it's like, OK, I just need an appointment setter and then I'm going to have all my problems solved and I'll just hand everything over to the appointment setter. And like, I don't even need to manage or lead them right. when it's like, OK, but we can't even like no good appointment setter is going to come into your business right. if you're making less than, I don't know, 60 grand a month. And you have no reps. Yeah, There's no reps. It. Nobody's there in the company. And you're just like, I just need one person and it's going to fix everything. No. So. Right. Because top talent comes to top opportunity right exactly. and so if you want the best possible setters or sales reps then if you're only collecting in your business 50k a month right like even if they were making 10 percent, that's 5k a month no really good salesperson is going to take that opportunity right they're going to go to the business where they could be making 20 grand a month mm -hmm. okay so um i just kind of think yeah like anyone who's kind of ready to scale and who understands that the problem that you think you have might not actually be the real problem mm -hmm. that's the type of people that we look to work for um because we always like to do you know end-to-end -end consulting right from uh we always say like you hear people all the time say like click to close it's like mm. click to close to continuity right because we don't just want to like get the top of the funnel and then the, the sales start in but also how can you retain your clients right so um yeah that's pretty much all i'll say cool. and uh, thanks for having me this has been really cool absolutely well ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in to agency talk we'll love see it you next time